Hey guys, here I am with a new video of uh, rule of 17 in cranial nerves. So there are few important uh, cranial nerve lesions that we need to know which are 10th nerve, 7th nerve, 12th and 5th nerve. And we usually tend to confuse like if the 10th nerve is involved, see let us suppose uh, if the 10th nerve is involved, we all know that vagus nerve is important for the supply of pharynx, larynx, ovula, palate, soft palate and all right. So whenever the vagus nerve is involved, they ask you a question like is the uvula deviated to the ipsilateral side or the contralateral side. Similarly, when the seventh cranial nerve is involved, the angle of deviation of the mouth is towards the ipsilateral side or contralateral side. So these are the zones where we tend to confuse in the exam and we answer it wrongly exactly the opposite answer we come to. So here uh, is a mnemonic that is rule of 17. So let us understand this uh, part first. Cranial nerves, when you add upon 10th nerve plus 7th nerve, that results in 17, right? That adds up, that sums up to be 17. So the lesion of this 10th nerve and 7th nerve causes the deviation to the opposite side. So how to remember if it is opposite or same side, meaning 10th nerve has 0, that is O, O for opposite side. So 10 plus 7 constitute to be 17 in which the deviation is to the opposite side whereas 12 plus 5 is also 17 here the deviation is towards the same side so remember it like 5 looking like s so same side so i used to remember like this 10 plus 7 is 17 so 10 is o that is opposite side whereas 12 plus 5 if the lesions occur in these cranial nerves which is hypoglossal and the trigeminal nerve the deviation is towards the same side now let us understand each uh, nerve in detail Firstly, first tenth now. Tenth meaning opposite side, right? So the deviation is to be opposite side. That is the basic mnemonic here. So the tenth now, vagus now, supplies to the pharyngeal muscles. And these pharyngeal muscles are required for the maintenance of midline position of the uvula. So this is the midline position of the uvula. Both sides pharyngeal muscles act towards upside so that the uvula is in the midline. Whenever there is a lesion, in the left side that is when the left side 10th vagus nerve lesion is present then the left sided pharyngeal muscles or the muscles which raise the soft palate uvula functions like decreases in function or the function is affected right but the right sided function is normal so they lift up the uvula as normal so the uvula goes towards the right side see the lesion is on the left side Whereas the uvula is deviated towards the opposite side. Opposite side meaning normal side. So sometimes they might ask you the uvula divides to, uh, deviates to the opposite side or the normal side or the unaffected side. So this is the unaffected side or the normal side towards which uvula is deviated because the pharyngeal or the muscles that supply the uh, palate or the uvula are properly functioning on the right side whereas they are affected on the left side because tenth nerve lesion is on the left side. So this explains the uvula deviation towards the opposite side. Coming to the facial nerve that is uh, seventh nerve, this supplies all the facial muscles, right? So the important muscle under discussion here is levator anguli oris. So here guys, if you consider this as the mouth, the levator angular oris is present on both the sides and its function is to maintain this position of the mouth. The corners of the mouth or the angles of the mouth are maintained in their position. Whenever, let us suppose, this is right side and this is left side, right? So, whenever uh, there is a lesion on the left-sided 7th cranial nerve, this levator angular oris cannot function. So, it stays like that, like at, at a lower position. Whereas, the right-sided one is functioning, right? And it is over-functioning because it does not have the opposite side uh, which opposes its action. So, it over-functions and that leads to deviation of the mouth on the right side see exactly that is shown in the picture mouth is deviated above right side whereas left side it is flattened because this sided levator angular oris function is compromised so this explains that whenever the seventh cranial nerve lesion is there angle of the mouth is deviated to the unaffected side or normal side or the opposite side so that explains the first line that is 10 plus 7 is 17. Coming to 12 plus 5 is equals to 17 line. So 12th now, hypoglossal now, the term itself tells it supplies to the muscles of the tongue, right? So here the muscle under discussion is genioglossus muscle. So genioglossus muscle, the main function, see, if this is the normal position of the tongue 
and this side you have one genioglossus muscle and other genioglossus muscle right so normally the function of genioglossus muscle is to push the tongue towards the opposite side so remember guys normal function is to push the tongue towards opposite side so uh, eventually like uh, when both are functioning equally the tongue remains in the midline position that is the normal position for uh, uh, for suppose now there is a lesion let us suppose in the left sided genioglossus muscle that is left sided 12th cranial nerve is gone so it the supply to the left sided genioglossus is gone whereas the right sided genioglossus is intact because right hypoglossal nerve is normal in this condition so this keeps on pushing but here there is no pushing action right this is compromised so what happens is tongue deviates to that side so tongue is deviating towards left side and the lesion is also on the left side so that explains the term in the 12th cranial nerve palsy the lesion or the deviation is towards the same side right so when the lesion is on the left side the deviation is on the left side but in the facial now look at here the lesion is on the left side whereas the deviation is on the right side right similarly to the uvula the lesion is on the left side whereas uvula is deviated towards the right side that explains the hypoglossal now coming to the trigeminal now trigeminal now is related to the position of the jaw so trigeminal now muscles of mastication and all right so here the muscle under discussion is lateral pterygoid muscle so what is the function of lateral pterygoid muscle it helps in protrusion and depression of the jaw in fact in all the uh, muscles of mastication like masseter lateral pterygoid medial pterygoid and uh, temporalis muscles lateral pterygoid is the only one that is involved in the depression this is the only depressor muscle so whenever uh, the function of lateral pterygoid is also similar to genioglossus it is also functioning like pushes the pu it pushes the jaw to the opposite side this is a normal function so let us suppose this is the right side and this is the left side right so whenever there is a lesion on the left side so left sided lateral pterygoid cannot function whereas right, right sided lateral pterygoid is functional so this keeps on pushing whereas this cannot push and that means the op opposing action is not there so the deviation of the jaw is towards that side so the lesion is on the left side and the deviation is also on the left side so this explains the whole rule of 17 for you i'll uh, provide this pdf on the telegram guys so this is an important uh, rule that you need to know and if you find this video helpful uh, please let me know in the comment section and i'll come up with more such videos uh, the upcoming video uh, next to this is the brainstem syndromes i'll consider midbrain pons and medulla in that video so wait for the next video bye